Praise the Lord everybody, welcome back to Bible class. We are here again tonight and we just give God the praise and the glory that we can be back online. We have been out for a little while and I want to apologize to my listeners and friends. But tonight I'm back to tell you that the anchor holds, hallelujah, that the sails are torn. There are so many distractions these days, but God has been good to us. He has kept us. He has protected us. Amen. Despite all the various challenges that we face, we can clearly say tonight what the anchor holds in spite of the storms. Hallelujah. 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 And so we want to thank you for sharing. Thank you for being with us. Can we pray? Can I stand up? Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for your love and your mercies. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. Hallelujah. You have been good to us. And we honor you tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to share. We pray, Lord, that you may inspire this program, inspire the presentation, Lord. Touch your speaker tonight. Let me hear from you, Lord. I pray for a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, spirit of discernment. Pray that they, those who participate tonight, Lord, will benefit and will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want you just say thanks to you that for your patience that you have been you know sharing we might not have been around for a little while but i want to thank god tonight i want to share with you tonight i want to share with you tonight from a very popular subject one that I um, have a number of persons who are experts better than myself um, in dealing with the subject. But the Lord has laid it on my heart to just share with you on the subject of leadership. And so tonight I want to use as my theme effective and productive leadership strategies effective and productive leadership strategies and i want to just turn in scriptures and I ask you to turn with me in your bibles to the book of saint luke chapter 14 saint luke chapter 14 and i want to share with you from verses 28 and 29 saint luke chapter 14 verses 28 and verse um, 29 and it says for which of you intend to build a tower sit it not down first and count at the cost whether you have sufficient to finish it lest aptly after he hath laid the foundation and is unable to finish it all that behold it begin to mock him saying this man began to build and was not able to finish or what king going to make war against another king sit it not down first and consulted whether be able with ten thousand to meet him that coming against him with twenty thousand or else well the others yet a great way off he sent it an ambassador and desired conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake not all but he hath, he cannot be my disciple. I want to share with you tonight from just to give you some strategies as a leader of ministries, um, a pastor, a department leader, uh maybe a community leader, 
maybe the leader of an association organization God has inspired me to be teaching training leaders for a great portion of my professional life and having said so myself as a leader I have a lot of shortcomings <laughs> so tell me therefore there's no perfect leader let me start there there is no perfect leader so if your pastor has weaknesses or if your CEO has weaknesses is just he or she is just being human so what is leadership it's the ability of an individual or a group of people to influence to influence and to guide followers leaders influence leaders guide followers or members of an organization a society or a team the prime minister is a leader the opposition leader the leader of the opposition is a leader the archbishop is a leader the pope is a leader your pastor is a leader the department the men's department director is a leader the ladies department director is a leader and we could go on and on what they're really doing they're endeavoring to influence or to guide persons leadership is often an attribute tied to a person's title maybe to the person's seniority or to their rank in a hierarchy so for example um once you are at the top of the order once you are in your home and you're the father you're considered the leader the ceo at the office even if the ceo has serious leadership challenges they are considered the leader of that organization so therefore you, you get the work sometimes based on um the fact that that's a title you have leadership your leader i want to look at and if you get a chance on my um presentation here tonight the geese where the geese is flying the geese flies in a formation it's a v it's a v the head geese is at the head of that flight pattern at the head bear and that geese's job is to while it is cutting the wind while it is leading the pack of geese behind it it is also cutting the wind so every other geese that comes that flies in a v the one in front of the other is making that that the person in front the geese in front makes it easier for the geese behind to fly in that formation now you know what happens each bird flies slightly above the bird in front of them and these are birds but yet god has allowed them to to have this this innate um, instinct each bird flies slightly above the one in front of them reducing the wind resistance you know what a geese does from time to time because that head geese is out there in that apex the, the, the geese takes turns being the leader falling back when they get tired am i sending a message here this means that they can fly for a long time before they need to rest because each time the other geese behind flies to the front and take over from that lead geese that has been facing the bulk of the wind the v formation that v right that v makes it easier to keep track of every bird in the group the geese the, the v help to keep track of every bird in the group leaders we must keep track of those that we are leading you know if everybody come to come to your 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 meeting this evening but if somebody is missing one time, two times, don't take it for granted. And if it is somebody who has never missed a meeting, the first time they are missing, give them a call. They never know what's happening. And remember this. 
Though the, the, the pastor is a lead one in your church, that is why he or she appoints department leaders. So at different times, they take on the headwind so that the one in front can relax. As you lead that men's fellowship, as you lead that women's fellowship, as you lead that convention this year, it takes the pressure of one person or one group of persons. The V formation makes it easy to track every bird. So leadership further is the act of guiding a team or individual to do what? To achieve a certain goal through direction and motivation. I said through direction and motivation. I never saw cussing them out or embarrassing them. I said through direction and motivation. There comes a time when a leader has to be strong. And a leader might have, will have to be at some point in the, in the whole process. Speak with a lot of authority to your group. But you've got to understand that your main function is to give direction and to motivate people beyond their comfort zone. When Jesus called 12 men, he called them and he said, come, I have a job for you. You are going to be fishers of men. You are going to now minister to people to bring them to me. And so he never do it alone. He empowered them. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was sit down, he spoke to them. They said, Master, we note that you speak to the people in parables. Jesus said, when I'm training you, I speak to them in parables. But I explain to you the meaning of the parables. It's called, I'm motivating you. Because I won't be here forever. My brothers and sisters, leaders encourage others to take the action that they need to succeed. In other words, leaders encourage people to take action that leads to success. To be a great leader, therefore, it is necessary for you to, to learn and cultivate the skills that it will take to be effective. You know, one of the challenges the world has is to find effective, motivational, encouraging leaders. Because many people will want to go to the front, but they can't take the heat. The first sign of criticism, they run away. The first sign of um, opposition, they run away. And they leave the pack to fend on their own. But leaders must encourage, be encouraged that we have to, and you as leaders, have to cultivate. You know, in other words, as to have to find that skill or that skill set to be an effective leader. An effective leader. And later on in my presentation i'll break down further when we talk about being effective you know i want to tell you about the lion and the cubs you know the lion the male lion his job is to protect his group of female lions who have children and that is called the pride p-r-i-d-e now the male lion must be prepared to fight another male lion who want to come into the pride to kill the children of the, of the females. And the, the male knows that he has to be prepared sometimes to fight to the death. You know, we have some people today, they say the Lord has called them and sent them to five um glory street to set up ministry and they go there and they're enticed they are enthusiastic and the first time somebody does something negative they run and gone 
and they leave the flock and they said, Lord, I'm let me go somewhere else. And they leave the flock around you. And they go to this next place and they do the same thing. Because many are called, but few are chosen. Some were sent, but some went. You know, when the Apostle Paul was sent to the Gentiles, when he began to itemize the various challenges that he had, he would have told you, I have been flogged 40 times save one. I have been shipwrecked. I have been criticized by my own countrymen. I have been robbed. I have been, I have been, I have been abandoned. But Paul says, despite all of these, I know I have a responsibility to, to preach to the Gentiles. You know, brothers and sisters, the lion will have to fight and fight and fight. But with all the fight, he knows that his, his job is to protect his pride. Father, you have been put as the head of your home. You have to protect your home. Protect your children from the corner boys who want to encourage him or her to be involved in all manner of ungodliness. And sometimes they threaten your person. But you cannot run away. Because as long as your family is in that environment, you have a responsibility to protect them. You know, I, 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 I must let you know that there are times when the, the, that, that male lion, he, he, you know, we talked about later on where the geese, sometimes the one in the V, the V formation, sometimes he, he steps back in order to let an, a fresher geese run the pride. My brother, pastor, my brother, pastor, you cannot run away when the going gets tough. Men's department leader, you cannot run away when the going gets tough. When the going gets tough, what it is bringing out in you is what, is what you are made of, your character, that desire, that will to stand up to opposition and to understand that you were made to win. You were made to win. Say that to yourself. I am made a winner. You cannot give up. You cannot run away. Watch this. What are some of the attributes of effective leadership? What are some of the things that you, you must have to say you're an effective leader? You must have a clear vision. And you must have clear goals. For example, I intend to build a tabernacle for the people of God. In my mind, I see it 30 feet wide by 80 feet long. In my mind, we clear, clear. We intend to comfortable seat 200 people. We intend to, on the rostrum, we want to be able to seat 20 people. We want to ensure the choir can hold over it. What you're seeing is not even realized yet, you know. But your vision is clear. And your goal is clear. If I am going to have 200 people in this, this, in this, in this um, tabernacle, it means my, my, my job to evangelize is cut out. I must be able to, strong, I must have strong, communication skills you must be able to say what is in your mind nobody can read your mind pastor nobody can read your mind um community leader you've got to say clearly and never say speak proper english because sometimes you really can't speak the proper english but if, if what you're saying people can understand you you're on your way good communication skill i need five people to come with me tomorrow we are going to the quarry i need 10 people to come with me tomorrow we are going to cut some bamboo sticks for the shed clear two mustn't turn up and say i thought i said two it must be clear 
leadership must have empathy and emotional intelligence. What am I talking about? You must be able to put yourself in the position of the person that is having a challenge. Put yourself in their position. Empathy. Sympathy says, I see where you are, I'm sorry for you. Empathy says, let me come there with you. You know, one of the greatest um, leadership ability is when you can sit on the corner with that man or that woman and hear what they are saying. Because sometimes we feel that we can't sit with the people because in our minds we will be lowering our style lowering our standards but leadership calls for emotional intelligence emotional i really am i'm wise enough to get a feel of what you're going through emotionally and i can almost the bible said in order for jesus to search us to serve us he had to be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. In other words, he had to see sickness. That is why when um, he, 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 his friend Lazarus died, emotional intelligence said, his sisters are crying because they miss a brother. He was my good friend. So St. John 11 verse 35 said, Jesus wept. He was, he, 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 he was caught up in the emo emotion. You can't be a leader and your heart tough like a rock stone um, around the gorge. You must be able to empathize, put yourself in a position, sympathize, have a heart to, that cares, and emotional intelligence. In other words, I am where you are. I am there with you. I am feeling what you're feeling. I am, I, am, I am seeing what you're seeing. I am hearing what you're hearing. And I can respond to what you are responding to. Emotional intelligence. Too many of our leaders feel that leadership means that you are up there and you can't come down there. In leadership, there is the up there and down there. I'm sorry for you. If you are the up there type of leader. You must be able to be there in the middle. You know, when they went to arrest Jesus, he never had on any unusual clothes. So Judah said to the arresters, you have to look at the one I kiss. In other words, he looks like all of them. He's one of us. He's, he looks like us. He talks like us. But we know that he's our leader because he is above us. In his emotional intelligence. In his empathy with us. In his ability to teach us. We have seen him perform mighty miracles. And we know that he's God. You don't have to lift up your muscles. And raise your voice for people to know that you are the leader. There is a place for everything. But you need to understand that people respond to you. When they feel that you know where they are. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You must be adaptable. Leadership, the church, the and community, the family need some people who can adapt. You know, light is gone and you sit there in the darkness, cursing the darkness and wondering when light is coming back. Watch this. This is a shirt. Humility is the key. Don't curse the darkness. Light a match. Light a candle. Light some bush. But hell, you must be adaptable. And you must be resilient. You must be willing to... Um, your adaptability will cause you to conform. And conforming don't mean that you commit sin like them. But you understand where they are. You are able to know where they are. People do not like leaders who are not humble. They, they see you as a threat rather than a value. If you're not humble, 
they don't they don't go in a way with you you're not constantly driving them and the best form of leadership is it, it, are the best followers are those who are impressed with you not because of what you say but because of what they see you do oh glory to god that's leadership when i talk about strong communication skill courage is what it takes to stand up and speak courage is what it takes to sit down and listen courage the threat is great but i'm going to stand up and speak when martin luther king walked to washington to 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 to, to give to stand up for the rights of blacks and brown people he knew they wanted to kill him as a matter of fact when he was in new york a woman a black woman like himself pushed a knife in his chest and the the the, 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 the um the people said the doctor said if he had sneezed it, it would have it would have run to his heart he knew his life was in danger but he decided to stand up courage is the ability to stand up and speak up there are some things you have to talk sometimes it hurt people but you have got to say it to defend your leaders the people you are fault that is following you you can always count you know on um some people to do the right thing after they have tried everything else you know um there was there was a <laughs> Um, there was a woman who sought to embarrass one of our leaders, Sir Winston Churchill, who was a former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And he said, you know, never, never, never give up. One woman said, sir, shut up, you're junk. He said, lady, I'm junk now. But in the morning, I'll be sober. But you'll still be ugly. He was sort of nip you this mouth, eh? Fact of the matter is, Churchill was willing to stand up, even when the Germans were, were bombing and, and, and creating a lot of mayhem. Churchill stood up and said, we're going to fight them on the sea. We're going to fight them on the land. We're going to fight them in the air. But we're not going to run away from them. The rest is history. My brothers and sisters, we, the lesson here is never give in. Never give in. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give, give in. Except to your convictions of honor and good sense. The only thing you're going to give in to is good sense and your convictions. My brothers and sisters, never yield to force. Never yield to the apparent overwhelming might of the enemy. Oh yes. There are some people, their mouth is their greatest asset. They talk loud and they make a lot of noise. But you've got to understand, beyond the noise, you have a job to do. When they are when finished making noise, you still have to stand up. And get the job done. You know, I remember when we were building our church in um in where we are now. A gentleman came along and he was very loud, very loud. He made a lot of noise and to give the impression that no no work not going on here and 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 man, he was real loud. I didn't know him, so, but the way he was loud, it could cause you to be afraid. But I said to myself. If, if, if I'm going to be afraid, we can't lead. So I called him over by himself. And had a strong conversation with him away from his friends. And he said, Pastor, yes, so and so. I said, yes, but, but leave here now. You're making too much noise. But the noise he was making was very threatening. But listen to this. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. You have got to understand that your hope is built on the fact that your Lord and your Savior will never leave you alone. So, so, and that is, that is 
by way of strong communication skill. Listen, you must listen actively. What do I mean, listen actively? You know, it's one of the things to be talking to people. I don't know if they're hearing you. So active listening is saying, okay, I see what you're saying. I understand you. In other words, they, they know that you're following the person who's talking to you. Know that you're following them. Active listening. You're not listening in silence alone, but you're making them know that you are hearing them. So somebody's talking to you. Okay, yes, I hear it. Oh, repeat what you just said a while ago. Um, did you say so and so? In other words, they know that you're a part of the conversation. You know, my brothers and sisters, we must be friendly. The word of God says, he that want, he that seeketh friends must himself be friendly. The apostle, the, the great man Solomon. Leaders must be approachable. Leaders must be willing to give and receive feedback. Give, you listen, you hear, and you give feedback. Leaders must express confidence. If as a church we are going to win this generation, they cannot see any form of... Um, um, there's a word I'm searching for. We must be firm and strong, but willing to at least listen to what they're saying. Hear them out. But we can't waffle at every sign of opposition. Leaders, we must be respectful. We must be respectful. There are some leaders have manners to not even their own mother. We must be respectful. You know, a brother in your church is um, has committed whatever, real bad. And it's time to put him at the back bench, you say. And you want to stand up from the podium and, and address him. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. That must be the exception and not the rule. Take him aside and talk to him. Because you see that man, his children come to the church. His wife come to the church. And when you emasculate him in front of his children, when he goes home, how will he lead them? When you tell all that he does to his children in a congregation from the pulpit, and his children go home and know that their father is an adulterer. How will he guide his children again? Oh yes. Call him aside. Talk to him aside. Let him know he's wrong aside. But never put him in an environment where the children lose respect for him. So don't scold him in front of his children. Let the children go aside. Do what you have to do. Then you bring them back in. Because at the end of the day, that man might be an adulterer, but he's still a father. He's still a husband. He's still a community leader. And we have to respect the fact that having erred, having wronged, you make him know he's wrong. And he must know he's wrong. But you cannot and should not bring him down to a snail, a worm, in front of his family and say you're doing God's work. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Be respectful to people. Be understanding to people as leaders. Amen. And so, the seven C's of effective communication. Be clear. Be concise. Be concrete. Be correct. Be coherent. Express your thoughts in a clear and calm way so that other people can understand what you are saying. Be complete and, of course, be courteous. Remember now, sometimes it's not what you say. Your right is assured. It. Not a place to curse and throw words to people. It's a place to empower. Watch this. Sometimes you have to enforce discipline from the pulpit. But do so, right, still with the fear of God 
And at the end of the day, you end your admonition with love. Brothers and sisters, I do what I do because as you know, I love you. And so my job is to point out the wrong to you. But at the end of the day, with all that happening here, your pastor still loves you. The people must be confident to know that I was scolded, but I was not killed. I can rise again from the dust, from my ashes. Amen? Very important. How do I build and motivate my team? I must create a positive work environment. There are some environment that you cannot exist in. There are some churches you go there. Every day you go, there's a problem. And pastor has never one day stood up and said, Brethren, God bless you. I love you. Thank God for you. He's always out there with the whip, the rod, the cane. The, the... Wow. Jesus called his disciples. Watch this. Peter was called Jesus had to say to Peter, get behind me, Satan. But what, listen to Jesus' next word. He said, the devil wants to sift you like wheat. You're the word of encouragement and empowerment now. But Peter, I'm praying for you. My God. You mean the boss know that I am wrong? But the boss is praying for me. Yes. He feels now that all is not lost. He feels now that there's hope. He feels now that despite the, 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 the misstep, his boss still loves him. I want to say to our followers, don't take your leader's kindness for granted. Many of you, because your leader is so kind, you trespass on their benevolence, their kindness. And you are rude, unreliable disrespectful and disloyal you'll have your reward you know you'll have your reward but that's just for you and aside to my leaders i want to encourage you create a positive work environment create a positive congregational environment an environment where people can see themselves growing encourage people collaborate and innovate collaborate in other words let's work together and let's build something that's not here innovation you know one of the things i learned when i was starting ministry as a young pastor we never had musicians so we had to innovate so we got some tambourines and my brethren became one of the best tambourine players anywhere around that's that part of this, um, the community at a time. Because we just know we have to innovate and create music. You know, the other day, light went. And we had a visiting pastor from elsewhere. And she said to us, My goodness, I never miss the music today. Mark you, no light was there, so no music going to play. She said, Your brethren, um, clap, sing, shout, jump, just like when music is here. It never came out of just by chance. It's something we did as deliberate we were intentional we said to ourselves if music is here if no music because we have got to learn to be innovative and to collaborate to bring in and to and to and to, and to attract the, the the power of god and the blessings of the lord my say to you leaders be willing to recognize and reward your team when they do well Somebody reached out and, you know, um, fixed the color. Don't just stand there as a leader and say, you have to fix my color. No, thank you. Somebody was, um, was, was out of the norm. Reward them. Do something for them. You might be in a, with a congregation for the past 20 years. And they were with you in good. They were with you in bad, in thick and thin. They stuck with you. Have a, have a, a, um, a membership appreciation evening. <laughs> I don't know, mean they're appreciating you. You give them some something and bring them up on podium and take a picture with them and say, No, why you are here? 
I want to thank you for being with me over these past years. Nobody respond to a leader more than somebody who feel appreciated. Can I talk to you? Hallelujah. Even when you pray to the Lord, you want to feel the Lord appreciate you. How do I know he appreciates you? Because he answers my prayer. So every time he answers your prayer, you feel a little bolder to go back to him tomorrow. Because you is a God who shows that he loves you. He answers your prayer. The same with your brethren and friends in your ministry. The same with those in your company, in your organization. This lady, this man has been working with you for the past 30 years. And you behave as if they, they, have a, they, they must work with you. Remember, they could have gone elsewhere. Every single member that comes to your church, and I use your church guardedly, I know it's a Lord's church, but come to your congregation. Every one of them have an alternative. What are you saying, Bishop? I'm saying they could go to another church. Easy, easy, tomorrow morning. As easy as that. They can get up and leave you, and when they go to church, it's you and your wife, one. All she can leave you up there, too. <laughs> but they come because they feel attached to. Hallelujah. They feel that th this is where they belong. They feel this is where they are wanted. Oh, glory to God. They feel this is where somebody cares for them. Oh, yes. And sometimes the members, not all of them warm to you, Pastor. But there are people in the church that they warm to. That is their family. Is their friends. And they come there because they come to meet family. Oh, my God. You can preach about heaven until you drop down dead. They are there because they are in the midst. They are among family. Yes, yes, yes. Heaven will come, but they are among family. Yes. You know, recognize. Reward the achievements of your team. What type of decision lead maker are you? Do you make informed decisions? When you're under pressure. Or do you just react? Do you make informed decisions when you're under pressure? Or you just react? Did you expect it to happen? There are some things that are going to happen to you. It must not take you by surprise. You must be able to see it coming and plan for it. And you must be able to make profound decisions even under pressure. You must have good problem solving techniques. For those who are into behavioral science, you have brainstorming sessions. In other words, you gather your ministers around and there's something you need to do. And you said, guys, we need to move. Um, we need to move the roof from here and put it over there. And hear their thoughts. Sometimes the decision it won't be yours. It will be a combination of all of them. Sometimes you need to um, bring in, yes, the, 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 the people who can do a SWOT analysis. What is that? S-W-O-T. In other words, they will look at your strengths, the strengths of your church. The weaknesses of your church, the opportunities to your church, and the threats to your ministry. Let me say it again. They look at the strengths of that, that your ministry has, because every ministry, as bad as it is, has some strengths. <laughs> look at the weaknesses. Every ministry, no matter how strong it is, has some weaknesses. And there are opportunities. Oh, opportunities around. Yes. And there are threats around. Do an analysis and see where you are. And that way, you can plan for the next move of your ministry. We must be able to balance risk and reward. Risk and reward. How do I balance it? Yes, yes. If we open another branch, what's the reward? What's the risk involved? 
If we start service one hour earlier, what's the risk? What's the reward? If we start one hour later, what's the risk? What's the reward? I'm talking to church leaders because, you know, so many times we preach Bible and Bible sound real weird, you know. It sound far-fetched. But we need to understand that, 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 you know, everybody weigh their risk against their reward. Prioritize. How do you, how do you manage your time and how do you delegate? Prioritize the task that you get effectively. You can't do everything and you can't be all things to all men. Delegate some of the tasks. Moses was trying to keep court. He had three million people around him and he wanted all of them to tell him their problem. Hello, Moses, are you crazy? So Jethro said to Moses, Moses, choose leaders of thousands, hundreds, fifties and tens no people's um, capabilities and reward them accordingly if somebody don't love people you can't put them in charge of the um of the care ministry without caring looking taking care of the the, the, um, the widows and the older folks you can't do that if they hate women you can't put them in charge of the um put them to work along with the ladies ministry if they don't love men, you can't put them to work along with the men's ministry. You have to know people's capabilities. And yes, there are persons in your ministry who have all the weakness I just mentioned. They don't like no man, they don't like no woman, and they are still a part of your church. Are they going to heaven? That's between them and God. But, but they want to come to your church. Let them come to the door. Avoid micromanagement. In other words, if you give somebody something to do, don't call them every second and ask them where you reach now. Tell them your parameters. Tell them what needs to be done. Allow them to do it. Then they feed back to you before the final execution. Why? You want to see what we discussed was being followed and the final product is what we really wanted. So they go ahead, execute, meet, talk to, put in place. But before they do the final thing, they talk with you we look at where it's at. We say, yes, that's what I want. Produce now. You wouldn't micromanage them, but you have not given up your responsibility to have the final say on what's happening because you're a leader. Amen? All right. Delegate tasks. Right? Um, collect feedbacks. Make improvements. No matter how well your ministry is doing. Improve on it. Do something different. Celebrate your achievements. Celebrate your milestones. Celebrate your achievements. Celebrate your milestones. Celebrate your achievements. Celebrate your milestones. There are some persons who are waiting for the final day when you have church opening to celebrate where you are now. My goodness. You have done so much work. The windows are not in. Celebrate. Celebrate. Brethren, we have come this far. Let us have a wonderful praise night. Let's celebrate where we are. Next step, windows. But for the time being, you are celebrating your achievements along the way. Watch this. And listen to me now. This is very sobering what I'm saying. There are people who started with you in the foundation that will never live to see the church opening. Lord Jesus. So if you wait for the opening to celebrate, they would have died, they would have worked their life out and would not have gotten a chance to celebrate. Oh, glory to God. God bless you, Pastor Heinz. Watch this. There are people who start with you that will never reach, never see the roof go on. Because before the roof go on, they are going to die. But what you do, you celebrate because you reach Lintel. Brethren, look what God has done. As a matter of fact, all the people that were with us before we put up the roof, we're at Lintel now. All the people that have worked with us to Lintel stand up. And they stand up. <laughs> celebrate them because that is their celebration. They will never see the roof go on. 
Because they are either going to migrate and don't come back. They're going to die and never see the roof. Or they might go blind. So celebrate where you are. Celebrate your children. They haven't passed the seasick yet. But celebrate them. Let them know that you. I love your child. Watch this. If you never pass, I love you. If you pass, I double love you. But I still love you. Celebrate them. Because you know what? The guy who never passed CXC tomorrow, today, is going to be the best woodwork bed maker tomorrow. And watch this. You think earning the money is to put on a tie and a jacket. Well, he's going to put on an overall and earn more than you. Celebrate him. Bless them. Thank God for them. Because that's what leadership is. To know when to celebrate. To know when to stop at a milestone and say thank you. It's all a part of leadership. Major success. And I, close, I want to talk tonight about what Jesus said in St. Luke chapter 14. I want to talk to people who sometimes we bite off more than we can chew as leaders. We had a wonderful speaker at church on Sunday. And he said, some women want to get married, but there are three um, husbands in her mind. One, um, that you would have waiting on the Lord for and prepare yourself until he comes there's one that in your mind is a piped dream is a six feet two weighs 200 pounds drives a, a hero or a Benz lives upscale he travels to Paris goes to London and have breakfast um, in in Barbados and and that, that's your dream and he says, that's a dream. And it might never come true. But he says, I can't remember the third one. But I remember those two. Many of us as leaders, what we have in mind, it just can't work. Because we are, we are pitching way above our ability. Remember this. Don't put your goals where it, is, where it frustrates you. No, too high it frustrates you because you can't reach it. And too low that it makes it it allows mediocrity let me say it again don't pitch your goal so high that having not reached it it frustrates you and don't pitch it so low that you reach it so easy it you make yourself settle for mediocrity understand yourself and understand that jesus spoke of the man who gave one ten talents one two talents and one one talent but he said I give you the amount based on your ability. So Jesus said, which of you intend to build a tower? You're going to build a tower. Amen. You don't sit down first and count the cost. Do a budget. Ask yourself. So I want a church that is 100 across, 200 down. It must have an upstairs. It must have a belfry outside. It must can see 3,000 people. Or 4,000 people. It must have um, a parking space for 600 cars. And to reach a church is a trip up the mountain. Help yourself. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Don't set your goal. Where even you are 50 years and 60 years in the ministry. You are depressed because you don't reach it yet. The goals were too high. Jesus said sit down first. And count the costs. He said, do you have enough money to finish what you have in mind? He said, less happily, unless you lay the foundation and can't finish it. And Jesus said, because I can't finish it, people begin to mock you. Now, that is Jesus speaking. You know, we, we in Jamaica say people laugh after you. So, listen to this. Give yourself enough room to expand but allow yourself the opportunity to be able to see the finish of what you started. Let it absorb a little. I did say celebrate along the way. 
But you want to be able to finish something and then expand on what you have. And that is why developers today, they build you a three-bedroom house. But they give you land enough to build another two-bedroom. Because they said to yourself, maybe you want to build two more, but they can only afford three now. But later on, they can build on the three to get the five. In other words, you are building within your ability. But you're going to stretch yourself later on to achieve a little bit more. Jesus said, what king decide to go to war? And the army that you're going to take on is stronger than you. Much stronger than you. You know, it's like me set a Usain Bolt. Usain retire. But it's like me set a Usain Bolt. Usain, give me a race over 100 meters. I know I can beat you because you stopped training now. That's a foolish comment. Whether Usain was training or not, I couldn't beat him. And I could pray and fast and go on 40 days fasting and believe God and speak the word and turn around 40 times and, and say, I already know come you see him. He's going to run back away and beat me. Because my ability was never and can never and will never be able to beat you see him. Unless him crawl like a snail and me run a little bit with my head. What am I saying to you? I'm saying... Leader, don't make your goals to be equivalent to the next man's goal. Set your own goals. High enough to achieve it, but low enough. High enough to, to, to stretch you, but not to frustrate you. Low enough to achieve it, but not to put you in mediocrity way to feel that you have achieved. Don't go below your ability, but don't go above, way past your ability, because you can frustrate yourself. Jesus said, people can mock you. So I, I, I really wanted to get this. Whatever you do in life, brothers and sisters, we must count the cost. Implement strategies that are going to be effective, and that are going to be productive as you seek to lead your ministry or you seek to lead your home, your community, your company, your little business, your big business. Set your goals, but do not go overboard. Neither do you go so low that when you achieve it, you make your, it put you in a false sense of greatness. When what you did, a little child could do it. Stretch yourself, but don't frustrate yourself. Keep it low enough to be achieved, but not too low to, to dumb down your ability. I pray you are blessed this evening. I pray I spoke into your heart. I pray you find something useful in this presentation. Because guess what? We're all here to help each other. You help me, I help you. And go home next week. Back in church. Celebrate your strengths. Celebrate those that walk the walk with you. <laughs> celebrate them. And celebrate your family. Don't forget mommy. Don't forget your wife. Don't forget your children. Celebrate them. Thank them for being there with you. And when all is said and done, there's a mighty celebration in heaven. Get saved. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in the name of Jesus for the removal of your sins. Get the Holy Ghost. Speak in tongues. And get ready for the great celebration in heaven. My God, we can't wait to be there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. Hallelujah. Thank you for your words. Thank you for those who shared. Thank you for speaking to us. We pray, Lord, that we'll get ready for even a greater celebration in heaven. We thank you and bless you now. We pray for Jamaica land we love. Pray for our homes, our communities, and our people. Help us to be great. But help us, Lord God, to be humble. Humble enough, Lord. Hallelujah. To serve others. Great to achieve. Oh, your anointing upon us. Thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for all those who shared with me tonight. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Lady Charlotte. Oh, wow, it's great to see you. Amen. All the way to Georgia. God bless you, Lady Marcia. God bless you, Lisa Lynette. Amen. Lynette Sims. God bless you, the brethren from my own congregation in Orange Street. We love you. Thank you for your support, Deacon. God bless you, Lady Pat. Amen. God bless you all. 
See you, God, God's willing, next week, same place, same time, with another anointed word from the Lord. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening in Jesus' name.